So Jeff is uh, always bragged about the fact that he doesn't like to sleep. He doesn't think sleep is important. But according to a new study, it's the number one reason why you're so antisocial. The study finds that chronically uh, sleep-deprived people feel lonely and less, and they're less inclined to be around engaging and engaging with others. They avoid close contact in many of the same ways as those with severe social anxiety. I sleep about four hours a night. Now, um, you know, there's all kinds of tricks. To I, sleep to well sleep. Those, I sleep well. I sleep well those four hours. Yeah, four hours. I do uh, the same four thing. Four to five hours a night. I wake up about twelve thirty, one thirty in the morning, somewhere in there, and I go to bed around nine o'clock. And then sometimes I just can't get back to sleep. The worst thing is because of our jobs, we go to bed pretty early. Sometimes, I, I'd say ninety percent of the time. I shouldn't say sometimes. I say ninety percent of the time I'll fall asleep at eight, eight thirty. But I fall asleep for about twenty five minutes, then I wake up, and then when I wake up, that's the that's the problem. I've taken this energized weird nap and it's usually putting the kids to bed and I'll fall asleep next to them and I'll wake up because I got to get to bed or I got stuff I got to do and I'll be up until midnight as that's a, the worst as a result of that and you know as you know we get up early for our job so that's where the four hours of sleep comes in I get up about four after going to sleep at midnight yeah and it's terrible it's that's not that's not good for you, and it probably does lend to the crankiness. Because I, I mean, the, the, basically, when you're saying you're antisocial and you don't want to be around people, you're saying you're cranky, right? Yeah, yeah. No, you're very cranky. I think people know that. The study shows uh, well-rested not, people no, 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 often no. feel lonely. I'm not very cranky. You can be very cranky. No, I'm not very cranky. I just don't. I choose not to deflect. My crankiness. Sometimes you're cranky on other people. Well, yeah. to you because I work closely with you. But yeah. Do I even talk to anybody else? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you don't sleep enough. Uh, apparently, people that even get lots of sleep, if they're around a sleep deprived person, they also f- have the anxiety and feel um, antisocial. Because so you, what you have is spreading to other people. Secondhand cranking. Study also says that you should be getting seven to nine hours of sleep a night. You don't want to get more than nine. You don't want to get less than seven. Because getting too much can be too much as well. Oh, if I sleep eight hours, I get the biggest headache when I wake up. I'm cranky. You want to talk about cranky. That's when I'm cranky. Yeah. I get that eight hours of sleep. I'm not a happy camper. So I don't know what your issue is, why you can't get to sleep, but there is uh, Healthline.com. Can't it, just, can't it just be that some people, not everybody's the same? Well, yeah, no, that's true. But still, I mean, I still think you probably need to get a little bit more sleep. Have come up with some ways to help you get to sleep. And the first one right off the bat is my favorite. And it drives, and my wife and I fight about this all the time. I want to open the window, but she has seasonal allergies. But the point is you're supposed to lower the room temperature because if the temperature is lower in the room and you get the blankets on top of you to stay warm, you're going to sleep better and you're going to sleep longer. And then, of course, there's breathing techniques you can do. Maybe that's why I don't sleep. Um, that much because my wife keeps the house too hot probably oh like yeah 73 at all the time and yeah. i i get up and sometimes i'll get up and i'll be like dude it's too hot and i'll turn it down she gets mad she wakes up in the middle of the night she turns it up they but, say doing yoga or some kind of meditation right before you go to bed like uh, an hour to a half hour before will really help you sleep can better. i be honest with you i think that that that's what i'm getting when i help put the kids to sleep is you know they're doing their thing they're you know we're we're trying to get them to sleep so we're we're singing to them softly or we are you know uh playing a game with them or we are reading them a book i think that serves as meditation that's why i conk the hell out at that time but it's when i I, because i have to get up i can't sleep in the kid's bed one it's uncomfortable too it's just not you're fully clothed, you know, I mean, it's just not, it's not comfortable and I can't sleep in the kid's bed, but maybe that serves as meditation. Maybe we got to ha- bring the kids back into the, into the old, uh, parents bed. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's so going to help you. So I could get my sleep. Yeah. I mean, we have a dog sleeping with us and I swear he drives me nuts and he's the reason that I can't get back to sleep and he wakes <laughs> me up in the first place, either a snoring or he has to go to the bathroom. I'm like, what? You can't hold it. We took you right before. We the went funny to bed. thing about it is if I had no people in my life and I was truly this four to five hour asleep guy, I'd probably get a lot more sleep because I wouldn't have the distractions because I wouldn't have anybody in my life 
Uh, by the way, we, we shared this. Uh, it's on our Facebook page. You can check out uh, 20 Simple Ways to Fall Asleep Fast. There's actually some really good ones on there. Stuff you probably heard of before, like if you exercise during the day, don't drink coffee at night, don't eat right before you go to bed. Even though I swear a big glass of milk will help me sleep every single time. Love that. Anyways, Jeff and Jeremy you're Page. lactose intolerant. No, no, no. I'm uh, No. The heavy cream is, I'm a little sensitive to heavy cream. Oh, yeah, that's right. You drink water milk. Yeah, but I drink the, worst milk. the, the, the low-fat milk, yeah. Skim milk. By the way, that's going to be the poll question today. Well, tomorrow. I'm going to make that the poll question tomorrow because I want to keep this closest uh, uh, thing in the Vinyl 4 going for a while. But we're going we're gonna to poll people tomorrow, okay? At midnight tonight, that poll's going to launch. What are you going to ask them? What kind of milk do you drink? Well, non-fat, 2%. Whole milk. Whole. There's there, almond milk. There is one cashew there, milk. There is one percent milk, by the way. Don't 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 slight one percent. Yeah, but I mean, how? Okay, you're gonna go non-fat one, two. Yeah. Okay. Skim. What skim? Milk? I'm not calling it non-fat. Skim is non-fat. Okay. That's because skim is just so, skim sounds gross. It's better just to call it non-fat milk. That's why I. Say why is it. skim such a gross sounding word? When skim is gross milk? because it's skimming because it's a gross it. milk. That's why it's gross. <laughs> it's not even milk. It's blue water milk. Subscribe to the Jeff and Jeremy podcast now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. It's your Central Coast commute friendly podcast.